Now, to be fair, there are countless scary sounding bills that you know frequently float around Congress that hardly stand a chance of becoming law. Why should we care about this one? Well, for one reason, you should care because it stands a very good chance of becoming law. Uh, it has more than 100 co-sponsors in Congress. And unlike SOPA, which had huge online outrage from the public and tech companies alike, this one actually has the support of key uh, tech companies. Uh, with SOPA, which failed, uh, there was a petition that was linked from the homepage of Google and major web properties, including Reddit and Wikipedia, went dark to protest it. They're probably not going to do that this time around. Uh, CISPA is a very real threat. And at this point, it very well could become law within a matter, I mean, within a very short period of time. And uh, the White House has expressed concerns. But don't let that reassure you too much, because they also expressed concerns about NDAA. And then Obama signed it into law on New Year's Eve. And they've expressed concerns about other bills that have then become law. Yeah, well, I'm glad you mentioned the, the White House uh, issue because, you know, there, there's been a lot of articles sort of saying, well, the White House has come out against this. But, I mean, uh, if uh, an NSA flack is uh, their equivalent of the big guns to, to oppose legislation, I don't really think that uh, we can sleep soundly. But, um, you know, uh, let, let's focus on, on this issue of sort of activists gathering uh, behind or against or in favor of uh, CISPA. Why is it that Facebook, for example, Google, uh, why have these companies not come out against this? What's in it for them in this legislation? Well, I think whenever you're gathering data, that's a potential business model. I think it's a sleazy business model. But you can sell, I mean, you can sell that to the government and make money off of it. So it's a revenue stream. And furthermore, I think these big tech companies love the litigation immunity that the government or other agencies or even companies, you know, a private security company, can seize your information under CISPA. And we're talking about very private information, the websites you visit the searches you make, if you're doing research on a personal medical condition, if you're sending private emails to your spouse, your girlfriend, or anybody else, these are emails that could be seen by a number of people. And that litigation immunity uh, protects these companies from being sued. So I think they like that aspect also. I think internet users, individuals hate this for the same reason. Uh, there's really no recourse if your information is abused. Uh, I mean, I'd argue that this is a bill that is designed for abuse. That litigation immunity is completely absurd. So Congress, you're saying that Congress is intentionally trying to screw over uh, American freedoms of, of, of speech, privacy, and information? Uh, it's been a legislative twilight zone, really, since uh, NDAA was signed, into, was signed into law. We saw that. And then we saw a bill that literally uh, criminalizes certain forms of peaceful protests. That was signed into law. And then we saw SOPA, which was uh, breathtaking in its scope and in its audacity and in the extent that it goes against everything America stands for. And that only failed, not really because of public opposition. I think it failed because big tech companies were against it. Uh, this time around, we, the tech companies don't have our backs. So it's up to the American people to speak out. And from people that I've spoken to online, it really sounds like when you contact your member of Congress, and you say, you know, I don't want CISPA. This is not something we asked for. This is not something that's good for the internet. It's not good for the economy. It's not good for our privacy, obviously. Uh, when you contact these members of Congress, their response is something that approaches uh, detached amusement. Uh, they don't really care what you think at this point. So it's definitely, uh, I mean, it freaks a lot of people out, and with good reason. Well, you know, they might not uh, care what the, the average Joe thinks, but I guess money talks. And we do also have uh, the addition of this horde, essentially, of defense contractor lobbyists on the Hill pushing for this legislation. Talk a little bit about that. That's exactly right. Uh, this is not a bill that the American people asked for. Uh, they didn't say, hey, government, we need more regulation over the internet. The internet works pretty well. Uh, this is something that was pushed by for-profit uh, spying companies, and it was pushed by a handful of tech companies. And it's totally counter to what would be in the best interests of the American people in nearly every possible way. And we've seen this time and time again where Congress, uh, our supposedly elected officials, are no longer representing our needs. Uh, they could be focusing on a number of issues that would help the average person far more. What about increasing, uh, you know, uh, transparency and liquidity in financial markets? What about bringing people back to work? Uh, any of these things would be a better use of their time than uh, these crazy spying bills that make us look like a joke on the world stage, uh, that we're attacking the internet, one of the areas where America excels and innovates. Why are we trying to destroy this? It makes zero sense. 
essentially shooting ourselves in the foot. I think that's a good point you make there. But really briefly, for, for those who aren't necessarily tech savvy, um, you know, the, uh, the average American might say, well, you know, I'm not going to send out terror sounding emails. I'm not going to Google for, you know, terror threat information. I'm not planning cyber attacks. Should average Americans who don't do bad things care about this bill? Uh, you really have to ask yourself, even if you're not a terrorist or whatever. And by the way, SOPA, they used, you know, we're stopping online piracy as the red herring. This time around, they've pretty much doubled down. They're saying, now we're using this to stop cyber terrorists, whatever the hell that is. Uh, so for the average person, you have to ask yourself, do you want strangers that you know nothing about, people in local police departments, people at privately run security companies, do you want them to be pouring through years of your emails, every single Google search you make late at night, uh, I'm not even going to go there, but do you want all these private things uh, being in the hands of strangers and them having uh, absolutely uh, no accountability? No. If they turn around and use that information in the worst way possible, you can then uh, you can't even get a lawyer and sue them because they have litigation immunity. It's well, scary. It, it, it is certainly scary. And uh, if you do want to figure out a way to get in touch with your congressman, I know the Electronic Freedom Foundation and ACLU do have uh, ways to go and do that. Thank you so much for clarifying us on the issue. David Seaman, journalist and the host of The DL Show.